Hello and welcome to Economy of Markets TV. I'm your host, Dave Okenquist, the Senior Research Analyst here at Dent. Joining me halfway around the world is Mr. Harry Dent. Harry, you're coming to us from Australia. First of all, where are you? It looks like you're in a hotel room. <laughs> what city are you in? What is going on, Harry? Yeah. Uh, I'm into Weston in Brisbane. Brisbane is, is kind of like the Florida uh, of Australia. It's northerly, so it's actually warmer. More retirees move up here. It's got the Gold Coast. It's great. In fact, this is a great Western hotel, and the best W hotel I ever stayed at was here last time I was here. So I love Brisbane. Um, I love Australia, uh, and and I just jet lagged the whole time. But I tell you, Dave, something happened to me. It never happened before. It, it was this is this is in the morning, like so. It's Thursday morning here when I was doing the speaking in Brisbane, and and the screen was behind the stage, and then there was a drop off, and I didn't realize that. I go to point to something on the stage, I went down. <laughs> I mean, I just felt people thought I died or something. It's just so funny. I fell. I fell so naturally. Maybe it's the jet lag. You know, I just kind of felt. I didn't even get a bruise, a cut, or anything. I get right back up, and I said, "Oh, that's all right. Rock stars do all this the time. Lady Gaga, you know, you know, Britney Spears, they fall off the stage all the time." Yeah, I've never that happened. That happened before. But people were actually impressed because I got like right back up. <laughs> and, and later, all my, you know, my promoters come and say, oh, do we need to go to a doctor? Did you cut your head? I don't even have a scratch. Or a, so really strange. But everything, everything happens once. I don't want that to happen again. But I, I, I can't, I can't believe that <laughs> nothing at all happened from it. it. It was the easiest fall I've ever taken. Well, that's good. We want you to come home uh, safe and sound. Uh, we don't want anything bad to happen to you. And uh, it's good to know. Well, you, like you said, you followed in Lady Gaga's footsteps, so you're just fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if so Lady Gaga does it, how, you know, <laughs> how bad can it be? Uh, so, okay. So you're in Northern Australia. So I, I yeah. learned, I learned a little bit, I think, from my third grade geography, so they must be in their uh, late spring season. What's the weather like there now? Well, you know, yeah, it's just about to turn summer here. And, of course, uh, the winter season's better in Brisbane because it's yeah. warmer. And and the summer season's better in Melbourne, which is on the colder side south. So everything's opposite there. South is colder and north is warmer. So, I mean, this is good everywhere. Melbourne was the first city I was in, and it was it was quite cool. But by the time I left there, I was only there two and a half days. By the time I left there, it was warm. So, yeah, we're coming into good season in Australia. But I tell you, Dave, everywhere I go, these cities are modern. They're wonderful. They always look better. Cafe, they got cranes everywhere. This is bubble from hell. And at least our audience here, you know, because a lot of them are on our newsletter and stuff, they get it. But I'm telling you, this is, this is bubble city. Australia is the second most overvalued uh, country in the world, second only to China and in the developed world, Hong Kong. So I'm just having to warn people about real estate is going to have to get down to reality, even though they have demographics so much better than us. They have an endless flow of Asian immigrants. And you walk down the streets of Sydney or Melbourne or Brisbane uh, or wherever, it's like a third of the people are Asian and they're higher than average income and education. So they got a really good thing going here, but they got one of the worst real estate bubbles in the world. And that's what's going to get them in the next few years. Okay, so it's safe to say you, you're not over there picking out houses. Uh, what, what's, <laughs> what, what's next on the agenda? Do you have, I know you were doing multiple cities. Do you have another one you're going to? Uh, I'm not sure where you are day to day, but uh, what's going yeah, on? Yes, we, we, we did Melbourne for two days, Sydney for two days. I'm in Brisbane. This is the first of two. And then it takes a whole day because Perth is like going from, you know, New York to California almost. So we have to travel, and then I do the last two days in Perth. Perth is like the Wild West, and it's also the center of their um, resource, iron ore and, and resource exports. And so they did great in the commodity bubble, and they're doing the worst now. The commodity prices have fallen. But Perth is actually the most innovative leading edge. They're, they're the Wild West uh, of Australia. So that's I always love going to Perth. My father came over here a long time ago and his favorite city in the entire world was Perth. 
Interesting. Yeah. So he's talking about the size of Australia, how everything is different. It just feels like, yeah. almost feels like you're on another planet, the way you're just kind of describing it. Yeah, yeah, real quick, the whole, and it's, it's growing fast because immigration, all of Australia, which is the continental size of the U.S. approximately, yeah. is, has the population of about Florida, the whole country, and it's concentrated in five cities. How so I love it. It's intimate. I can go here and in a week or two, get in front of the, the whole country. That's great. Now, Harry, not, even though you are so far away, have you been able to, uh, before I let you go, have you been able to keep your eye on uh, anything going on stateside, inter international, U.S. markets? Do you have anything to say about that before? Uh, yeah, before it, it just, it's just mind-blowing here with all the volatility in the world and, and all the challenges Trump is facing and all this stuff. The market just keeps edging up. It's not, you know it's broken to new highs and normally it would really break up strongly, but it's more like edging up, but it's, it's even starting to get where it's close to breaking my megaphone, you know, the higher highs pattern. So I'm watching that very closely. Uh, I, I would have a hard time imagining with stocks so overbought right now by the short term technical indicators we follow, but uh, if it can break up much higher, it may just we may end up having a blow off top uh, yet in, in, in the next two or three months. So it's either up 20% in the next few months or down 30%. So, oh, I'm watching this uh, really closely, even though I'm over here and it's night when it's day and I'm jet lagged half the time. <laughs> Harry, when do you think you'll get a, a clear idea of um, you, that was sort of a very wild uh... Uh, a very high <laughs> can go up really high or down pretty low. When, when do you think you're going to find some clarity on that? Well, you know, the, the, the market, uh, I actually, I mean, it's right now, it's looking a little more towards the break up side. It was looking more towards the break down side for the last month or so, because it just couldn't, couldn't go much higher. You know, it makes slight new highs. Okay. That's a sign of weakness, but I mean, lately, the market goes up no matter what the news. So it wants to go up. But we do know one thing from our indicators, the smart money index, uh, which is my favorite indicator because very few people follow that compared to the yield curve and all the traditional stuff and all types of, you know, investor sentiment indexes. You know, the smart money index is still saying no. Um, so um, I'm watching this. Um, but it, the market really feels like it wants to keep going up. So, so I think the next few weeks should be telling. Yeah, absolutely. Harry, thank you so much for joining me from Australia and connecting with all of our readers. I want you to come back again, safe and sound. Please, no more falls, Harry. <laughs> Watch your step, please. <laughs> well, it, it was only a three-foot stage. If it had been a 10-foot stage, yeah, I could have died. <laughs> <laughs> well thankfully it was a short drop harry thanks again so much uh for all of you uh, actually if you've got a question to uh, send in send those to tv at economy if you have a specific question for harry on the markets or economics or really anything about uh maybe about a real estate in brisbane harry will definitely has a take for that for harry den i'm dave oakenquist and this has been economy and markets tv